So is the Edge Router X still a good buy in 2018? I think so. Now, I will cut to the chase though, and we're gonna qualify this. So do you have a fast internet connection, as in do you have gigabit? Do you have like, well, let's say Google Fiber? If you're running a gigabit connection, you can, and I've done a video on this device, you can turn off hardware offloading and this will route at that speed. You can get full gigabit speed out of this. That's a wonderful and amazing feat of a device this small and this inexpensive. And like I said, I'll leave the links to my previous reviews and speed tests I've done on this. Now, the way you get that speed is by hardware offloading. Now you're probably asking why isn't it just on out of the box uh, as a default config? Well, the reason why is because a lot of these are used in you know, like a small business and they want QoS on them. Do you need QoS is the question I kind of want to get to here. Because I've had people say, oh, uh, I don't want to do the hardware offloading because I hate to lose the QoS feature. And when they're running it in their house, I'm kind of like, okay, what are your use cases for it? And maybe they're valid. Maybe, you know, it, people just think they need quality of service. Now, the idea here, and here's the quality of service breakdown and how to set it up. They've got really good documents on here. And for example, this would be with a VoIP configuration, which is the most common reason we put QoS in in a lot of systems. Now, if you need something that can both route at gigabit and have QoS to prioritize your VoIP traffic, then you're probably not looking at this if you have that high speed of a connection. The majority of people, even us here in the, uh, at my office, you know, we only have a 50 meg circuit here at our office. Uh, they do offer faster ones. They are just substantially more expensive. And we already, if anyone doesn't know, pay a lot of money for our internet here in the U.S. in general uh, based on the speed we get. I know it's more somewhere else and it's less in other places. That's a different discussion. But for me, this we're using PFSense, but this would work on our office. Uh, we could do QoS on it and we only have a 50 meg circuit, so that's fine. If you have a 200 meg circuit, still able to do QoS on here. Once you start getting over there, you start running into the problem of its ability to route at that high speed. So for home users, this is still an excellent device. I think it's an excellent purchase and you know, you combine that, because this is just the router, with like one of these uh, Unify APACs. And this is, uh, depending on where you find it on sale, between $50 and $60. Some, I've seen them for less. I've seen them for more. Depends on the price uh, when you're checking it. But roughly in the $50 range, and this is roughly in the $89 to $100 range, it's mostly for $150, you have one of the best home Wi-Fi systems you can set up. And this is actually what, what I, um, when I'm not doing testing with PFSense stuff, this I put this in at friends' houses and things like that. It just works. It is like the easiest way to get your friends set up with really good internet at home and a really good uh, router. Most of my friends, they're playing some games. They're not worried about QoS and VoIP. They don't have a bunch of VoIP phones in their house and not that big of a deal. Now, that being said, let's go on a little bit about the hardware and NAT. And they, they did a great explainer here to talk a little bit about what else this happens. So if you're not familiar with exactly hardware NAT is, hardware NAT, let me zoom in a little bit for you. Hardware NAT offloading, and I keep saying hardware NAT, it's actually more than it, just as the command is HW NAT. But offloading is used to execute functions of router to the hardware directly. And I'm not gonna read all this, you can read this, but let me explain to you. The processor in here, what you're getting for this price is not super, super fast. So when you don't offload the hardware to the very uh, specific, I believe they're ASIC processors that do the uh, routing on here, the processor has to handle. And it's only able to handle so much at the price point to, that, to fit this in here. So it's a great value, but unless you turn on that uh, offloading, you can't, the processor just can't keep up. Hence it limited to, they said 300 meg here. Now, when you do this, you're going to lose the net flow, the ability to do bonding and QoS. But the other functions, VLANs and just general NAT, work perfectly fine. So if you're a home user, that probably doesn't matter to you. And if you're someone who's got gigabit at home, depending on how much bandwidth you're pulling or if you're maybe doing something like using torrenting, um, your voice quality will probably still be fine if you don't have a ton of devices behind there. Uh, so for the people who are just the home gamers and things like that, great. When it comes to if you're doing a run torrents on there, that's where you may want to run QoS, but uh, most of the time you can probably pause your torrents to play your game. That's another option. <laughs> so yes, it's still a good purchase. 
yes, this is still an excellent device. Uh, you can't beat it for the price, um, but if you have that high speed requirement, you will have to do the sacrifice. And I'll leave the link to the video where I show you how to change the hardware NAT settings in here. Um, you'll have to make the sacrifice of losing QoS and the NetFlow in there. So if that's a big deal to you, you're going to have to bump up to something uh, bigger, more expensive that supports the full QoS and that. And this is one of the reasons I like the PFSense one I recently reviewed. Uh, that's looks really good. The SG3100, that's a great choice for to step up. Or you can go and look at some of the higher end Unify stuff. So they make higher end devices as well. But if, you, or if you're really looking, this is what people they ask me all the time. I'm looking for an inexpensive solution for home. I'm telling you what. Edge router, it's quality, it's well built, it's the great solution for home. Combine that with, you know, start out with something basic like one of these uh, Unify ACs. Generally for home use, plenty. Absolutely great. If you need something beefier, they do have higher end models, but uh, these work great. It's an excellent setup. I've shown how to set up the edge router, I've shown how to done that, I've shown how to set up the uh, Unify. Uh, maybe one day I'll do a video where I combine both together, but or put them in a playlist and just watch both. It's pretty straightforward how to set them up once you kind of get the uh, idea of how these work. But they're both excellent products. I'm really you know, a big fan of a lot of the Unify platform. We deploy it at a lot of our clients. And we've used these at our clients that don't need QoS. Uh, they don't have any VoIP systems or anything special. They just need, you know, a lot of our small businesses are just a couple, a uh, few computers. This is way better than the crap that you get from the cable providers here in America, you know, between uh, Comcast and Wide Open West, the two popular ones here. They give you kind of crappy modems that just don't, eh, they're not that great. Uh, bridging them over to this, Easy peasy solution. Drop these in. Uh, excellent. They work great. They're small. Still a good buy. So they're still relevant in 2018 um, until the next line of products come out. Combining them together, you know, they're not going to be as easy out of the box as some, you know, the the generic routers you see. But I tell you, the quality and routing performance you get out of these are better than some of that. Uh, consumer grade ones that you'll find like at the big box stores and things like that. So if this is helpful um, and it's also for me to reply when people ask, should I buy the Edge Router X still? Um, because people see the videos from last year and they go, well, I don't know if I should buy it here in 2018. Yes, it's still a wonderful buy in 2018. Definitely buy it if you need a basic, you know, if it fits your needs and you don't have that high speed requirement with a QoS requirement. Other than that, it's great. All right. Thanks for watching. If you like to catch in here, like and subscribe. Um, if you want me to do some more videos on Edge Router X, let me know. Uh, if not, check out Willie's got a lot of videos in there. Willie How. Uh, there's a lot of great videos on how to configure these for doing special things because all these ports can be configured uh, to a lot of different network options. A little bit more in depth in configuring it. Maybe I'll do some videos on there, but I think Willie's got a lot of them covered. So go ahead and check his channel out uh, regarding that. Thanks.